Tell me how Tutwiler changed in your eyes from 1986 to as recently as 2013. Well, in 86, you didn't have all this going on. You had a lot less hostile environment. Of course, we had more room. There wasn't as many people there. You had more room. Things ran a lot more smoother. This former Tutwiler inmate, we'll call Amy, doesn't want to show her face to protect the privacy of her family. She does want people to know what she experienced when she served time at the prison under federal investigation for possible unconstitutional conditions, including widespread sexual abuse of inmates by corrections officers. That's something Amy says she witnessed. She says guards preyed on indigent inmates with little family support because those inmates are more likely to trade sex for basic supplies. She remembers a woman in her dorm being targeted. What did they offer this woman that was near you? They said, uh, well, uh, I know that they ain't gave y'all no supplies and uh, no, you're out. Uh, you know, come on, uh, and you can get everything you need, everything you want. And they'll offer makeup, stuff like that. In exchange and for then, what? what do they want In exchange for do? either oral sex or sex or whatever. And where does that go on? Well, there are so many places down there. Sex abuse is just one part of what Amy calls an unnecessarily cruel environment. She says officers would often take away inmates' personal items, like socks or panties, for no apparent reason, and would speak to inmates, she says, like they were dogs. I mean, they might come in and say, all right, y'all bitches, or all right, y'all MFers, I I'm, I'm got my pen, I got my disciplinaries, I'm writing up 20 people today. You know, just, you know, come, you know, just coming in straight off the bat like that. Would they speak to you and other inmates like that on yes. a regular basis? Oh, yes, every day. They called us bitches and whores and sluts. Amy is not the only inmate who's told us corrections officers use profanity and offensive names, even racial slurs. In fact, every current and former inmate of Tutwiler who's spoken to us on or off the record has described a similar hostile environment. Do you think that the response by the Department of Corrections has been swift enough? I do. In March, we asked Prison Commissioner Kim Thomas about changing that culture. He says that change is happening through education and training for employees so they know the protocols on how to communicate with female inmates. And if they violate protocol, he says, they'll face repercussions. I want my staff to turn this into a good thing because we have a great opportunity to affect lives of women. And when you're talking about the lives of women, not only are you talking about that particular woman, but you're talking about their current children, their future children, their relationship with their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their grandmothers. And to me, that's very important. More than 900 women live behind these walls. Many were traumatized or victimized themselves before they landed in prison, which Amy says is only made worse by Tutwiler's chaotic atmosphere. At 52 years old, Amy says she finally takes responsibility for her crimes, but also believes the system offered her no way out. And um, it's sad that I that I had to go as many times as I did, you know, up and up. It's, there's no rehabilitation there. This is what you get out of Tutwiler. You get a new crime and a new partner to do it with. The mental cruelty can be, them scars can run deeper than physical, because that's going to heal. But that and just the environment itself is just like, like a ticking time bomb. I can't believe something worse hasn't happened.